Welcome back, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. My name is Pratesh with Kaizen Crypto. In this video, I had the opportunity to speak with several of the team members representing the Card Wallet project. Card Wallet is a DEX that is going to be built on the Cardano blockchain, and they're intending to bring DeFi solutions to the everyday user. So it's very exciting to see what they're building in this video. I had the opportunity to ask them some questions related to their project and their token. So interesting to know all their developments. And on a broader sense, it's really exciting to see all the developments happening. So many projects now building on Cardano. And very soon, in just a couple of weeks, we're going to see a lot of these projects going live. So excited to keep track of all the interesting developments. I really did learn a lot from this conversation. If you all do enjoy this type of content, please be sure to drop a like for me. It really does help support our channel. Also, if you want to stay up to date with all the relevant Cardano information and the latest updates, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and be sure to click that notification bell so you know exactly when I post a new video. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and jump right in. Welcome, everyone. Today, I'm joined by Tiago, Victoria, and Fernando, some of the team members who are representing the Card Wallet Project. So guys, thanks so much for joining today. How are you all doing? Great. Thank you for having us here. Yeah, all good this side, too. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Yep, yep, absolutely. Looking forward to our conversation today. Um, so guys, to start things off, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your backgrounds and uh, how you got involved with Card Wallet? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Victoria, would you like to, to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Victoria. I'm in crypto space for around eight years already. And uh, my major experience in crypto was throughout uh, building of Cointelegraph. I have been a CEO for several years. And uh, I remember that we were just starting cryptocurrency almost no one has known about it and now it's just booming so much uh any like restaurant i go somewhere and they see and i hear just people uh talk about crypto and this is very cool i believe to get into some space and then see how it arises uh, so uh, a couple of years ago, I left Cointelegraph and was looking for new, different, interesting projects. I've been consulting some of them, uh, for example, Scalable Solutions with Mark Berger. We have been working pretty closely. And then just recently, a couple months ago, uh, we had this great initiative with Card Wallet uh, built around Cardano ecosystem. Uh, I know Tiago for quite some time. And I know that he is also in the space for a lot of a lot of time. And I'm really proud of the team we were able to connect for Card Wallet. Really looking into that now. All the DeFi, DeFi space is booming, uh, yet it is still something which is, to be honest, quite difficult to understand. And our goal here is to build a product uh, which will be. Uh, accessible for everyone, even without a need to understand what is it and how it works. Uh, so I guess now, Tiaga, you will <laughs> continue my speech. Nice. Sure. Um, so yeah, I started like around 2012, um, but it was only really at the end of 2012, beginning of 2013, that I started mining. Um, and I've just fell completely madly in love with the technology and uh, time went on. Um, I lost, you know, the, I, 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 lo I thought I was going to make a lot of money because I bought the, 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 the miners when the price was going up and then boom, first crypto winter uh, that I went through. So oh, um, I, yeah, I had one of those horrible uh, ant miner uh, Bitcoin uh, ASICs that made a lot of noise and, sp and spent a lot of uh, electricity. So anyway, I built myself a six GPU rig, uh, started researching into um, altcoins. And I found this uh, little, you know, new project, young project, which I thought had really super great potential. And that's how I met this fine gentleman here, Fernando Gutierrez, who was also doing kind of like the same thing. I'm not sure if he was a miner, but he was already in the crypto sphere. And, uh, you know, I started participating in the community. I started contributing with tutorials and defending against the our arch enemy, Monero at the time on Bitcoin Talk. And it was a lot of fun. I had no idea. And that's how I, I got into 
um, the blockchain industry because the team invited me uh, to be part of the team. So um, uh, just as uh, so, yeah, it was it was beautiful seeing uh, this an unknown altcoin um, reach the top. Was it what was it three, four, five market yeah, cap? At, at some point, it was it was three, I think. It was absolutely amazing, and um, yeah, seeing communities build, and, and, it, and it was the first um, the first time I saw a self organizing community, which is very interesting. It was one developer, Evan Duffield, and then all of a sudden, this group of people surrounded him and started contributing altruistically. Um, there, there were no salary. It was beautiful, beautiful. Well, anyway, uh, time went on. I decided to uh, shift gears and, and try new things. Um, and uh, I always had it in me, like uh, I got into crypto because of a speech by Andreas Antonopoulos. Um, and it really resonated to me, you know, the core ethos behind why Bitcoin was created and the merits of blockchain technology. So I made it uh, like a point to only work with projects that had a clear mission to do something good on the social side, um, on the technology side as well, but something that really impacts the world that we live in and try to contribute to something better. So um, yeah, so I got to work for the Cardano Foundation, which was, uh, I was overjoyed. Um, and I got to meet a lot of amazing people. Um, and um, a couple of months back, um, I left the foundation and that's where I met uh, Mark, Mark Berger because he invited a couple of people to be advisors to help him launch Occamfy. So we got together we, and it was like in record time, like we really had to sprint. So we got together, we devised this plan, we launched the IDO, um, a bumpy ride. Yes, we all recognize it, but it was a huge success and it is a huge success. Um, and yeah, after like, like Victoria said, after one, you know, we were, all together in a call, we were brainstorming ideas. And then we were looking, we were like talking, we were saying like the, all these projects that are going to start on the Cardano network right after Alonso is going to be amazing. First of all, everything, every single experiment so far is going to be duplicated into this new change just to take advantage of the new change chain. But what are the gaps? And we identified that there was a huge gap in the wallet um, offering in the market, right? So, the world is being dominated by mobile. Cardano has a very clear mission to help bank the unbanked. And um, we're talking about several billion people in the planet um, who are straight to mobile. They don't have a computer, uh, so they don't, won't need a Web3 extension. All they need is a cell phone, and they have that cell phone. What they don't have is a wallet that can um, deliver on that promise. Uh, so Yeroi is um, Web3. and also uh, mobile. Uh, MetaMask also has mobile, but if anyone has tried to do DeFi on any of these um, mobile applications, it is a headache. Uh, no one uses it. Everyone that's into, into DeFi goes to a laptop or a computer. So what our mission really is to create a best-in-class product that is extremely seamless and easy to use that you can put in the hands of anyone and they'll be able to figure it out without having anyone else explain it to them. So that's how I, you know, got into this project, uh, um, uh, I'm extremely excited about it. And um, yeah, I'll pass it on to Fernando now. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Sure, sure, thank you. So uh, yeah, I discovered Bitcoin sometime in 2012, but it was one of these bull runs. And by the time I was ready to buy, the price had gone from 10 to 14 or something like that. So it was obviously a bubble and I kept waiting for it to fall by the time it was like a hundred i wanted to kill myself so i completely disconnected from the space because i was so dumb um but then sometime after that i say hey i mean maybe you won't uh get such a an awesome price uh, but hey you would you want to do things in the space you you like the concepts or whatever so i started to get engaged sometime 2013 and like uh, Theo said, in 2014, I discovered uh, the DAS project, back then Darkcoin. Uh, I got really excited about it because uh, I was very privacy concerned. Um, and I reached out to the developer. Uh, I, I really bonded with him quite well and started to get involved. Uh, soon it went out of control completely. I was the first non-developer to really join the team and then more or less official capacity. I did a bit of everything. I was in the board for many years. A couple of years, uh, I was a CMO of Taskor Group, the 
the, the main contractor for the network that develops most of the protocol. Um, and then in 2020, I decided to uh, leave uh, that, not because the project is not amazing, I'm still very excited about it, but uh, I wanted to try new things. Uh, six years is a lot of time. And I had a project in my back partner that I wanted to tackle. And while I do that, um, I, I was uh, starting to advise uh, some of the projects and Tiago reached out, he talked me about Car Wallet and he asked me if I could uh, advise them on the journey. And I was super excited about that because the uh, banking, the bank list is something that uh, is very exciting to me and that's one of the things that I was most involved with was our adoption initiatives in Latin America and how to put crypto in the hands of people who don't really care about crypto. They have a problem and you and, and they want to solve it and and that's what Car Wallet is trying. So I'm very excited to be involved with the team uh, as an advisor. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Wow. Okay. So everyone here has had quite a bit of experience holding some, some pretty high level positions within crypto. So interesting to know about everybody's backgrounds. We've got quite a diverse group here. So Tiago, I guess uh, you were, you're explaining to us a little bit more about card wallet. So I guess if we can get into that, uh, could you tell us just on a high level, uh, what is card wallet? What is card wallet at a high level? Um, it's a non-custodial wallet that has fiat on and off ramp, uh, on, on and off ramps. Um, it will be Cardano first, hence the name Card Wallet, even though at the final stage of our development roadmap, we do intend to issue an actual physical card. So we nailed it uh, in the naming. Um, Non-custodial wallet with fiat on and off ramps, um, working on the MasterCard, Visa, and Apple Pay networks. So anyone can buy and sell not only um, Cardano, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, on our MVP launch, but also native tokens. And then immediately after we will start working on Binance Smart Chain, also with uh, native token support. So that alone, and, and the MVP, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Victoria, is set to come out uh, mid-September. So the cool thing about uh, Card Wallet is, is as a startup, right, we uh, are raising funds. We are doing an IDO on um, Monday, the 16th of August, and we have secured enough funding for two years of development for salaries. So we do not depend on the token sale to start developing. And then it, 99% of the time, it's vaporware. We're going to put the first version of our product um, in the hands of uh, our community mid-September. Um, then we start implementing our DeFi um, solutions and architecture, which is going to be a lot of fun. So we have five, we have five set. First of all, we, we, the only milestone we imposed uh, like with dates is for the MVP. And uh, I think we are slightly ahead of time, but I don't want to jinx it. Um, then from then on, we're not going to commit, uh, at least not for now, for actual dates. It's going to be several weeks of development, not years. Um, but we, um, I mean, I've yet to see a project that, you know, builds a beautiful timeline with dates and then they always fail to deliver. So we don't want to fall in, into that trap. Um, but um, yeah, it's not going to be years. It's going to be uh, just a, a few months, several months, not a, a few, several months after the MVP. And we will roll out uh, a very, very interesting uh, features and tokenomic designs that uh, I think people will enjoy a lot. Nice, nice. That's very cool. So we were talking a little bit about DeFi. So I guess, uh, Victoria, a question for you would be uh, in terms of DeFi, I guess, in terms of using Card Wallet, uh, what are some of the solutions available for Card Wallet users? Yeah, so as Tiago mentioned, uh, we try to approach uh, like step-by-step -step, uh, product development. And uh, for now we have planned uh, three initial stages stages of our product. As Tiago mentioned, for the MVP, uh, we will support uh, Ethereum and Cardano blockchain. And right after MVP, we also go into integrate Binance Smart Chain, which means that our users will be able to access like all, like most part of uh, available DeFi tokens. Uh, they will also be able to uh, exchange uh, those tokens uh, inside of the app. Uh, no need to uh, leave um, to any other exchange. Uh, but on the first stage, the order routing will be on centralized exchange. Then after MVP, we will be integrating decentralized exchanges and order routing will start happening there. 
what else everyone likes about DeFi? I believe it's cool yield farming, staking, that you can get some yields on top of your coins. Uh, we are going to implement this is also top priority after MVP. First, uh, it will be available for Cardano. And then I think we will also add the support of some other staking pools as well. Uh, DeFi is also about decentralization and community, and it is even planned in our economics architecture that uh, we want to build the model when community really participates uh, in the development of our product. So uh, we are going to implement uh, token uh, voting capabilities uh, because we want to deliver the product our community needs. And there will be a possibility to vote and even to propose features community wants to add to the product, vote for tokens they want to, to have listed. And we even want to reward like most active participant, uh, participants of our active commun community members uh, with additional uh, token rewards. Uh, so this is the model we would like to build. That's awesome. That's really cool. So just touching on some of those points that you guys had mentioned. So with card wallet. So it's, it's going to be kind of like a mobile app. Is that right? So you're going to have this, this is almost like a platform that's going to interact with this debit card style, which allows you to hold your tokens. And then using this, can you actually like spend your cryptocurrency? Uh, like how does that work exactly? Is it, is it going to act as a, uh, a bridge to fiat because it is DeFi or like, how will it work exactly yeah, for the end user? Uh, this is mobile first product, uh, at least for the first stage of our development, but we do plan also to create a web version in future and uh, support uh, web three application. Um, for, for the like initial development, uh, yeah, you will be able to use your credit card card for buying and selling coins. So uh, we have partnered with a company called Simplex. This is a leader of the market. They provide payment uh, gateways for crypto, I think, to all major businesses in the industry. We already have signed contracts with them and have already integrated the API into our product. So basically, from user perspective, uh, what you need to do is just to choose coin, give your card, credit card details, and you will have your coins in the wallet in the matter of minutes. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, that's interesting. It's very exciting because I think uh, there's so much building happening right now and, you know, making it so that it's a, it's a user-friendly way to interact with the platform. That's awesome. That's really cool. So Fernando, question for you, sir. So I guess in terms of being an advisor, so you had talked about being an advisor for the project. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? I guess, uh, what's, what is the role of an advisor for Card Wallet? Yeah, well, it's uh, pretty simple in reality. An advisor is not someone who is full-time in the project, but brings some valuable uh, outside uh, perspective, because some many times people who are too close to the problem may not see other things that someone who comes from the outside can can do. And uh, since I have a lot of uh, experience in in the crypto space, I've seen a lot of projects. I've worked in a lot of adoption initiatives, and that's probably the, the area where I can bring more value. And I've discussed a lot with Tiago around that because in DAS we did a lot of that. And since Cardano is very focused on on that, especially probably in Africa, there is a big focus uh, there. There are many problems that are similar. And I think that I can bring some of the learning experiences we had back then uh, when or we still have, uh, well, the team still has, I still follow the last project a lot. I see a lot of the challenges and I think I can save some time in order to go faster to the market with uh, um, the experience I can, I can provide. Gotcha, gotcha. All righty. So now, uh, I guess I wanted to shift gears a little bit and talk about the DEX aspect of Card Wallet. So Tiago, you had mentioned in terms of launching this project, so working with projects like OccamFi, and uh, you'd also talking about integrations on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. 
Um, in terms of people who want to interact with the card wallet platform, I guess, uh, what blockchains can interact with it and, uh, why might somebody need to use a blockchain agnostic DEX? Wow. Um, not a tough question, but, um, yeah. So, um, as we mentioned for the MVP stage, it's going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano with all the, the native tokens associated. And then soon after Binance Smart Chain. So think of card wallet as um, DeFi in your pocket on the go. That actually is useful. Um, why would people want um, to interact with, with the DEX that is blockchain agnostic? Well, that is yet to, still to be seen. Um, it is our hope that uh, we, are, we will be able to provide a better price. Uh, so through our order routing uh, engine, we will be able to uh, offer better price, narrower spreads. Uh, and just the convenience, because let's say that you want to move um, Ethereum to uh, Binance Smart Chain. Uh, you know, there are the other solutions on the market, but typically you have to send it to an exchange, swap it over and then withdraw. Um, otherwise, uh, usually the fees are tremendously high. So what we're going to try to fix, we're going to try to fix that. So basically convenience, narrower spreads, better price, DeFi in your pocket, um, I mean, what else can you want <laughs> as a trade, as a trader, as a trader, if you're buying, selling tokens, that's, that's what you're looking for. Nice. Yeah, I know that's a, you, you touch on a great point there with the fees, you know, I was just thinking about how expensive it is to transact some of these tokens on other blockchains. So, you know, having a way to keep the slippage on some of the prices for these fees at a minimum, um, I think that's going to be very important. So one thing I'm really looking forward to is to see how, um, people who have multiple coins on different networks are able to interact with this blockchain uh, project with card wallet. Um, so really interesting to know about that. And um, I guess, Victoria, so touching on some of the points that you had mentioned, we were talking about the debit card, you know, users being able to hold their coins on the, on the app. So I guess like, how does that look exactly for Cardano? Uh, Cause you know, we're talking a lot about what's coming up with ADA, you know, lots of, lots of developments happening as we move closer towards Gogan. Um, so I'm excited to see what that actually looks like from a user's perspective. So are, are holders of ADA and other cryptocurrencies going to be able to stake their coins on the card wallet platform? I guess, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, I think it's on mute. Yeah, so uh, we are practically right now in discussions uh, with a number of most uh, respected uh, staking Cardano pools uh, in the industry, for example, Oros, Bloom, Paul, Kaizen, Mr. and Digi. And like we just discussing together how better to build uh, this functionality. As I previously mentioned, our goal is to do the interface so our users can do it just like in few clicks uh, because to be honest i have checked several products uh, on the market how they're doing it not the most convenient way to do also uh, the approach we want to have in our product uh, is to give uh, ability to the users who stake ADA also to get additional rewards on top of ADA uh, in tokens, uh, which we will be additionally listing in card wallet and also additional rewards in card wallet tokens themselves. So it will practically be not just easy and convenient to use card wallet for ADA staking, but you will also access additional rewards on top of ADA rewards. Oh, wow. Okay. So there is actually an incentive to use this platform. So I like that because, you know, for most people, it's like you go and download the Yeroy wallets on your phone. You know, you got your Roy mobile, you can choose a stake pool. So you're saying with card wallet, not only you're earning eight of rewards, but it's also the card wallet token. So, yeah. And yeah, not, not only that, uh, when new tokens are, are, um, introduced into into card wallet uh, if they provide like a basket of uh, a, a small inventory of tokens those will also be distributed to to uh, the stakers um obviously only participating tokens that uh, want to do that will be able to do it but i think they they will appreciate of uh, these users having access to this new token that otherwise they might not be aware of so it's a great promotional way to also get your projects now very cool yeah that's awesome 
So Fernando, um, a question for you would be in terms of what you had done with cryptocurrency projects in the past. So you had mentioned to us that um, you were an advocate for uh, Dash and uh, being an advocate for introducing the cryptocurrency to places like South America, Southeast Asia. Um, so in terms of your previous experience there, I guess, can you tell us a little bit about some of those challenges that you faced and um, what are some of the ways that experience can help benefit Card Wallet? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, first thing to consider is that no one cares about technology. You need to provide solutions, not technology. Uh, and you need to provide them in a simple way so people don't need to learn too much about crypto. And then you need to put that next to DeFi and they don't work well together. So I think the first thing is uh, we need to be able to abstract a lot of that complexity in order to address the specific problems of different users. Because uh, when you're talking about adoption and people using crypto as their day-to-day -day money or savings or whatever, in every country you are gonna have different needs. In DAS, for example, our biggest market was Venezuela, which is a failed country with a failed currency, which has added, well, has removed, I think it's 14 zeros from the Bolivar in the last 15 years. And the, the, the money has disappeared. Everyone has gone poor because of that. Yeah, only people who had some dollar savings were able to survive. So in that market, the volatility of crypto is not such a big deal. I mean because their, their local crypto, it, 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 it's, it's a joke. So for them, it's, it's very also when you have that kind of inflation, millions per year, um, even cash is a challenge. I talk with people that were trying to do, for example, a radio ad, and they'd say, no, I have this price and I need to answer in a couple hours because in the afternoon, the price is higher. Because when people get paid at the end of the day, they go buy something because the next day, maybe they will buy less of the same thing. So in, in those scenarios, having something that is more stable and is decentralized and it's safe and that is super useful. So you need to focus on uh, spreading it around so people have easy access, you have merchants and things like that. But in other countries, you don't have such failed currency. So maybe the needs are others. In Brazil, they have a relatively strong compared to the Bolivar uh, local currency. So people would use it more as an investment product because that's embedded master notes and people could obtain yield uh, on their investment before staking was a thing. So that was very successful there. In other countries, it was remittances uh, because uh, current traditional systems are expensive and um, and not very reliable. So uh, if, if you got crypto, that's very easy. So if, you trans if we translate that to Cardano and DeFi and all that and, and Africa, uh, I think uh, the good thing about having all these tools is that you can build custom solutions. In many countries, we may need stable coins because uh, when you are talking to poorer people, they can't take the risk of volatility. You can't ask someone who is earning a few dollars a day to uh, put them in something that can move up or down 10% a day. If it moves up, it's it's awesome. But if it moves down, maybe they can't buy lunch. So um, maybe you need to add a stable coins to the mix. There's uh, this other project that is doing great in, in Asia. It's uh, Terra, uh, or Terra, uh, Terra Luna is, uh, is the token. They have stable coins behind and they've been able to abstract all the complexity and users just use crypto without knowing. They are creating a parallel financial system or what Shello is, is doing. They, they abstract the, um, the address and they, and they link everything to your phone number. So that kind of things you can do. If you have DeFi, you have all these tools, um, you can move towards that. And then as the people get more confident, uh, you may be sewing them all these other features and cool stuff. But the, if you have the complete toolbox, you can tackle anything because no two groups of people have the same needs. And that's the only thing you need to concentrate on. Technology is irrelevant. It's only about solving their problem. I see. Yeah, it's a very interesting situation to see how crypto is going to be able to penetrate some of these areas. And you know, you touched on such a great point there with Venezuela. The average person who wants to go and buy groceries or food for their family, you know, using one of these cryptocurrencies, the price can be up one day, down the other day something like a stable coin is going to be what these people would need. And then what's really interesting about the solution you guys are building is that a lot of these people will likely have a smartphone. You know, they're going to be able to log into an app 
or use a debit card or something like that to be able to transact instead of having to carry around bundles and bundles of cash. For example, you know, you just pull out your phone and swipe your card. So yeah, it, it's very interesting to see that in another, it, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, in, in all these countries, you'd be surprised. I mean, in, in Latin America, Africa, Southeast Asia, um, countries that we consider on the poor, poor side of things, uh, smartphone penetration is crazy. It's not the same phone you have in your pocket, but we've worked with, um, I've worked in the past with uh, smartphone um, manufacturers and they are able to provide pretty decent Android phones and uh, starting from 30, 40 bucks. Um, so people do have smartphones. It's their connection to the world and they are proficient with them. So you just need to give them the tools to be free. Um, Every, everything is in place. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good points that you make there. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the token. So we had mentioned a bit about the card wallet token and how the users of the platform will be incentivized to use it with this token. Um, so I want to learn a little bit more about that, I guess. Uh, Tiago, could you tell us a little bit more about the card wallet token and the role it plays for users of the platform for things like uh, governance, you know, staking, we talked about yield farming. Uh, how does that work exactly? Yeah, we've talked, um, yeah, quite a fair bit about the actual, uh, usage of the token. Um, as a, as a utility token, it is 100% user centric community, community centric, right? So, um, the entire tokenomic design is uh, devised in such a way that promotes usage in various, various ways. So one of the things that we're going to do is reward the community for using the token. So uh, there will be regular rewards depending on your level of participation, uh, be it at staking or trading volume, or even we have some ideas to integrate social media, um, sort of like an ambassador type um, type setup. Um, so the people that contribute the most to, to, to the project also get, you know, some, some, some rewards for that. Um, we will have um, your regular governance where we will have voting. For example, we may, add, we may ask the community, would you prefer us to prioritize the integration of this fourth uh, blockchain, or would you like us to prioritize uh, the Web3 extension? The community votes, and we follow. So that's something that's very near and dear to us. Um, they will be able to vote on which next tokens to uh, to list on the platform. Of course, we will have discretionary power, so to speak, to, to list the ones that we believe are the most interesting and have most potential, but obviously we, we honestly truly believe in the collective intelligence. You will have things like native, stoke, uh, native staking, um, yield farming, yield optimi optimization, which we've talked about. Um, we're going to provide a zero, um, zero fee order routing for our higher stakers. And then when we have our card, there'll be things like ADA cashbacks and rebates and that. And so, yeah, we will have a ton, a ton, a ton of features. And we will also have something that I hope will, will empower us even more, which is the CWIP. So we will have uh, the Cardano wallet improvement proposal. So people in the community can actually come in and propose new features and new ideas, and the community will vote. And if it's technically feasible to implement, we will absolutely listen and, and, uh, and follow. So our mission really is to develop not only an app um, that we hope will get downloaded. No, we want to develop a community. We don't want users per se. We want a community to come in and talk to us and tell us what they want to see. So I'm really excited to, to, to see that happen. Wow, that's really powerful. I loved how you phrased that. So not users, but a community. So it's like a DAO almost, right? So these people, if no, you think we are, about- No, we are eventually going to do, we're going to set up a DAO. Yeah, obviously yeah. we have so I invite everyone to go to our, our website. We have the pitch deck up, which has you know the high level uh, design. Um, but yeah, we will have a DAO eventually. That's exciting. Really cool, really cool stuff. Awesome. So guys, I learned a lot from our conversation today. I mean, as far as what your plans are moving forward with Card Wallet, uh, Victoria, could you tell us a little bit about some of those future plans? And I guess uh, in terms of development goals, uh, where do you guys see yourself maybe within the next one to two years? Oh, wow. I always a bit lost when people say, crypto plans and in two years <laughs> like, i feel like in crypto 
everything can be changed uh, in two years completely. It's crazy. I know. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, but for now, uh, what we are looking to build firstly, all this concept uh, with DAO feature proposals and full uh, three stage of uh, tokenomics uh, built into the product. What we are also looking into is NFT marketplace, like it is now really on hype. Again, hard to say if uh, anyone will remember it about it in one year, <laughs> we will see. Uh, we have spoken here about cards also, and Tiago has briefly mentioned that uh, we have it in name, Card Wallet, also uh, not only about Cardana, but actually targeting the opportunity to give uh, to our community to have their own cards and to be able to spend their crypto uh, from those cards and get cashbacks in ADA. I think that this will be really, really great. And I think we will be able to edit it perspective uh, of one, one and a half years from now. Um, and we will, of course, also see for what our community will be actually wanting and what they will be voting for. And based on that, I believe we will be moving forward. Very exciting. There is lots of building happening right now. And uh, just to see all the amazing developments happening with projects like Card Wallets and many others, I mean, it's, uh, it's truly exciting. So guys, uh, last, uh, last question for you all here today. I, I really do appreciate everybody coming on to speak. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's great to hear from projects like yours to learn more. Um, I guess in terms of our viewers who would like to keep up with your progress and uh, learn more about the Card Wallet platform, I guess, where should they go for the latest updates? Well, the easy way to get um, people to be the first to know is to follow us on our uh, two main social media channels, which is Twitter and the Telegram announcement channel. We also have the Telegram uh, community channel uh, where we hope you know people start having conversations. Uh, you know, once the IDO is over, because that's always the boring part, and we actually deliver the MVP, people start playing with it. You know, just give us feedback, 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 and and start thinking. Look at look at our pitch deck. So go to our website, which is um, cardwallet.f and uh, I hope you put the links down below so that people can just click and, and yep. find these and uh, yeah have a look at the pitch deck um, let, let's let's get together let's talk about it let's let's build and move forward so hopefully everyone out there who's just discovering us um, will do just that come to our channels have a conversation with us and stick around because we're going to do great things together I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Yes, I will be sure to leave all those links. So Tiago, Victoria, Fernando, guys, thank you all so much for joining. For all of our viewers, really do appreciate it. Guys, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to drop a like on this video and make sure you check out those links down in the description. All right, everybody. Thank you so much again. Until the next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.